Happy 4th of July, everybody. It's July 4th, 2024, your day with the podcast being brought to you by Wyoming State Parks. Why wonder about the outdoors in Wyoming? Explore the statewide interactive outdoor recreation wonder map to find your next adventure. Well, a lot of you are going to wake up this morning, step outside and say, wow, it doesn't feel like July 4th out there. Some cool breeziness has developed, especially for you folks in Montana, parts of Wyoming, the Dakotas into Nebraska's northerly flow, bringing in some cooler Canadian air. Now for you West Slope folks, you're just going to bake, be hot and dry. As we said yesterday, it's all about where you are in regards to the Continental Divide. Long and east of the divide between now and Sunday. There'll be breezy periods. It's going to be cooler than average. A little bit, not a lot. A little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity is going to pop up. It's mainly going to favor the northern areas. But on Sunday, Sunday is a day now where it does look like rain chances east of the divide are a bit better. So something to keep in mind. Western slope, you're going to be west of the divide, hot and dry as that California heat will spread eastward. That heat will stay bottled up west of the divide until next week. Then it gets over the divide as the high pressure shifts east. And it'll be the eastern side of the divide's turn to get some hot weather. This will be especially true during the second half of next week. But for the next four days, it's going to be cooler than average in the north central and central and west central areas of the U.S. The subtropical flow of moisture is really weak. We really aren't going to have much weather next week. Next week, if you're a weather watcher, you're going to be rather boring. Now, later on, we do see that subtropical moisture starting to come back, but it's probably about 10 days away before it really gets going in earnest. Showers and thunderstorms along a frontal boundary yesterday from northern Wyoming up there by the Cody area into eastern areas of Wyoming and western Nebraska did see quite the sight. If you were in eastern Wyoming or far western Nebraska yesterday, you got to see a line of big thunderstorms develop. A lot of these became severe over west central and central and eastern areas in Nebraska late yesterday and last night, making for some great photo opportunities to see those building clouds. Those building clouds already now are heading into the Corn Belt and Midwest with those showers and thunderstorms. And if you kind of follow along right here, the black line and east of that line, that's where the weather's going to be, as well as where the deeper subtropical moisture is gonna be piled up in Mexico there. But you can see from the Pacific Northwest, through California, the Great Basin, nada. There's not much going on. You can see why. Very dry air coming through. There's that punch of dry air we've showed you over the last couple of days, kind of cutting off the subtropical moisture flow and shunting it. And then the winds aloft up here coming in from the northwest headed towards the upper Midwest. So if you're in between, not much going on. The upper level pattern looks like this today. Winds aloft coming in from the northwest, the big ridge along the west coast, and for the next four days, it basically stays stuck. This is Sunday. It's essentially, it's the same pattern. So you can see the northwest winds aloft will keep the northern and central high plains and Rockies cool, but the cooler air gets held up by the mountains. There's the what remains of the hurricane. It'll either be a, a weak hurricane or tropical storm by then. Does look like maybe South Texas could get into the mix with some heavy rain. Something to keep an eye on later, but see this trough right here? This will likely actually take barrel and pull it northward, the remains like this. So having the remains come westward is just not an option with this particular hurricane, at least for this part of the United States. So with the pattern stuck between now and Sunday, everything kind of gets stuck in terms of conditions. And you'll see a recurring theme here. Extremely hot weather for California through Southern Nevada, through Arizona, New Mexico, into Texas and Oklahoma, while the opposite up here. The, the difference between the light orange and yellow colors and the darker red colors here really showing to be along the divide. These are the high temperatures forecasted today, tomorrow, Saturday, and then for Sunday. Actually, Sunday, if you notice Sunday, Temperatures in some areas are actually going to be cooler than today. So there's just a very persistent pattern where that cooler air stays on the other side of the divide. The west side of the divide gets very hot and you can see a tongue of heat getting up into eastern Washington and Oregon and up into Boise here 
it's just going to bake. So if you want the heat, head west. If you want it to get cool off, if you want to cool off, head east. Precipitation today looks like this. Nothing really extensive. The Dakota is going to be looking at a very dreary, cool 4th of July. Same with a good part of Montana. Mostly light shower and thunderstorm activity. Not much going on. A little bit of upslope along the Laramie Range could happen a little later today along the Front Range of Colorado. This is what the precipitation looks like today. Really, not that much. Tomorrow, kind of the same thing. Staying up in the northern areas, Friday shower and thunderstorm activity elsewhere, very spotty. Saturday, we have another little push of cool, moist air. So you can see it's the Dakotas, it's Montana, it's northern Wyoming, and parts of Nebraska that have the most weather, where the systems are tracking out of western Canada and heading southeast. Just very little zilts, nothing going on over here on the western side of the divide. This is Sunday. I talked briefly that Sunday may, may be a little more wet east of the mountains, and it's looking more likely. It does look like that secondary push of cooler air Sunday will lead to a bit of some upslope. So Sunday, the weekend, is going to end up cooler. And we'll keep an eye on this, but it does look like rain chances east of the mountains on Sunday are, are a lot better now than they looked just yesterday. So that'll be something to watch out for on Sunday. So for the next three days, the precipitation chances are definitely going to be favored in the northern and central areas by Sunday, getting back further west, but held up by the divide. This is by next Friday. The high pressure ridge comes off the west coast and into the Rockies. So that is when the heat is on for areas further east. And when it comes to subtropical moisture, as we mentioned at the beginning, it's going to be very thin. There's not going to be much going on. And you can see temperatures by Wednesday. You can see the heat builds up into western Canada and begins to spread eastward by Friday. So the middle to the end of next week, do be ready for the heat to expand. This is the subtropical moisture flow by a week from this upcoming Monday. So we're talking all the way out around the 15th or 16th. That's the part of the month. The middle of the month is when it starts to get green again with the precipitable water. And that's when the thunderstorm activity begins to ramp up again. Now that is very close to climatology because when you look at thunderstorm activity in the month of July, you have a spike the last two weeks of the month into early August. That is something where this moisture flow does have a tendency to come back, and that certainly looks like the case. But next week, thunderstorm coverage is going to be very spotty and really not amounting to much. Have a happy 4th of July. Depending on where you are, stay warm or stay cool.